Hi, this is Margaret Bird. And welcome to Color Quest. It is the last week of 2021, so I hope that you and your loved ones are enjoying some wonderful holiday time before we start our new year. Looking forward to a new start to 2022. So today on Color Quest, we are going to be looking at a natural dye kit. Last week, we looked at a kit that was being offered by the Color Farm and created a beautiful silk scarf using scabiosa flowers that they grow locally at the Color Farm. It was a great project, beautiful results. I hope you've checked that out. If not, the link is above. And this week, we'll be looking at the natural dye kit from The Love of Color. It's a pretty amazing kit, not gonna lie. It allows you to test out some different natural dye matter that provide incredibly deep, rich, and vivid colors. On Color Quest, We've been looking at all kinds of different plants to bring about natural color into your dye practice, many of which are quite subtle. These dyes today from the natural dye kit are some of the vivid stars in the natural dye world. Kits really are a fantastic way to dive in to the world of natural color. They provide you with easy access to some different dye matter that you may be curious about but aren't quite ready to make a purchase in a larger volume or don't feel like you have access to. The kit also will provide you with written instructions which can be really helpful if this is something that you're new or interested in learning more about. So let's jump into the dye studio and crack open this natural dye kit and see what beautiful colors we can produce with it today on Color Quest. So the kit I'm going to unbox today is actually one that I purchased a few months ago and it came in this really cute packaging. <laughs> but what I had forgotten is that it actually was four natural dye kits in one. This is from a fiber artist by the name of Julie Sinden and a shop that she has called The Love of Color out of Canada. And I saw her kit come up on my Instagram and decided to go ahead and try it out. I contacted her, she was super lovely, spoke to her on the phone and purchased this bundle of four. She offers these different dye kits, but you actually get a discount if you buy all four in a kit. So today we're only gonna look at the first one. We will save these other kits for future Color Quest videos very excited about those as well but today's video is going to be about the natural dye kit and I mean look at this cute packaging it shows you what's included in it and different from what we looked at last week which was a kit that had everything that you would need to dye a particular piece of textile this actually focuses on the various mordants and dyes themselves plus offering instructions it does not include the textiles but it is enough dye to be able to dye a large volume relatively speaking of textile whether it be yarn or different types of fiber so we will look at those the four different dyes that are in here cochineal matter logwood and osage actually are really powerful dyes in the natural dyers world 
and we have used logwood in a recent video but we have never looked at these other three and what this is going to allow us to do is to make a nice variation of colors and test some of them out so we will open up the box so right here we have these instructions which look like they're actually going to be quite extensive which is fantastic um, it actually goes on both sides so we'll work through these and looks like there's some information about the different dye stuffs as well as instructions on how to use them so we will work with that and then we have a selection of four dyes one is matter which is the traditional dye of red that's been used for, again, centuries. We have cochineal, which is exciting for me. I did a lot of work with cochineal when I worked on a cochineal farm down in Oaxaca, Mexico in 2020. And that's a pretty special, also a historical dye of pinks and fuchsias. There is the logwood which we use to make black. It's the last step in natural black from a few weeks ago. It will make a purplish hue, as well as Osage, which will make a yellow orange color. So those are our four dyes. And then she's also including gallnut, which we did a whole video using gallo tannins, or in this instance, calling gallnuts, to have a tannin mordant as well as alum so here are mordants there are dyes and our instructions so let's get started since the kit itself doesn't come with the fabric or the textile you actually can choose so i thought i would try some different kinds of textile i thought it would be great to try some protein fiber so i've got silk ribbon as well as wool roving in a ribbon shape we'll definitely be using the alum for those and then i've got four pieces of cotton she's going to be doing the tannin alum mordant for cellulose fibers which in this case would be cotton so let's walk through step by step and get making these four different dyes so as you've seen in many videos we can begin knowing about how much fiber we can dye based upon the weight of the dry fiber and the weight of the dye materials. She has given us a predetermined weight of the four different colors. So if you were to split those into quarters, she's recommending that you could dye about 125 grams of fiber in each one of the colors. I'm not going to have 125 grams, maybe the cotton I will these certainly are going to be very very light so i will have enough that i can dye this and then i can always go back and add more fiber to my dye pot it's a considerable amount of dye potential just based on having the amount of dye matter that she's provided so let's start off by weighing what we have and just out of curiosity, I'm gonna weigh these just because I'm curious to see how much we have of these, the two mordants, as well as the different dye materials. They all feel about the same in terms of their weight, but let's check it out on our scale. These instructions are in the metric system, which quite frankly, you'll notice in here, I've really started using grams. It's so much easier to do calculations based on grams since it is the metric system. So my scale here has both. So I can work in grams and ounces. And so I'm just gonna shoot for grams. Again, like I said, it's, just, it's a lot easier. You'll get used to it. About 100 grams of fiber is approximately four ounces of fiber. She does have instructions here on estimates if you don't have a scale, which is great because I know a lot of people don't have scales. And so she does give you an estimate that approximately 125 grams is about one meter of lightweight fabric, such as cotton or 
even better, she's giving you sort of like a medium sized cotton t-shirt. It's around 120 grams. So you can guesstimate. Again, if you use more or less fiber, it doesn't really matter. It's just that you will receive either a darker or lighter color. So let's go ahead and kind of get an idea of what we're looking at, what she's given us. So she's given us 13 grams of osage, nine grams of logwood, which makes sense since you don't need as much logwood. Cochineal is seven grams and the matter is 15. So they're slightly different weights. I'm sure the instructions are gonna have us use the whole packet and knowing that this whole packet will be able to dye approximately 125 grams of fiber. So if we were to do the math, not that you have to, that's one of the beauty things of a kit, it's that, for example, if this matters approximately 16 grams, you can tell that if I can dye up to 125 grams of textile, the ratio is not one to one. These are strong dye materials. So 16 grams, if I were to do, or 15 grams, see how it keeps going back and forth, let's just say 15 grams, if I were to do the math, 12% weight of fabric if you're dying 125 grams what was the osage the osage was 13 I guess those are fairly close cochineal is more like 5% weight of fabric at 7 grams and logwood somewhat similar let's just say close to 8 or 9% if you're looking again at dying about 125 grams so all of these dye sources are quite strong and really are a fraction of the percentages needed in order to dye your textile. For the alum, it's got quite a bit of alum here. I was curious about this. 91 grams. This is supposed to cover all of the fiber. So if I'm looking to dye 500 to 600 grams of fiber, you're looking at about 20% weight of fabric, which is just pretty much what I stick to most of the time for alum. And for tannin, it's a little bit less. You've got 30 grams, and so you don't need as much tannin. Then we've got our fibers. Put those on. So you'll see that for this, for example, I'm only going to be dying about 15 grams of fiber for each of the colors. So we're gonna have plenty more dye to go around and we can do a lot more. So this will definitely be a dye that we're gonna save and use again so that we can utilize that full potential. Now, let's move on and look at the next step as your instructions. The first step, as we do often here, is scour or washing. We looked at it last week. There was a recommended stovetop scouring done with heat and a simple pH neutral soap. She mentions that she does not typically do a formal scouring. You would normally go through a scouring process that uses soda ash. She does explain that it's important, which we know, but that she has found simply machine washing the fibers has been sufficient. And if you wanna go super strong, you can go the soda ash route. We haven't done that here. I might do that sometime in the future. I think what I'll do is do what the Color Farm did last week, and that is put it on the stove with a little pH neutral soap and wash the fiber that way. So let's get to scouring. So we're just gonna take some pH neutral soap here from dish soap even, pour in just a tiny bit. A little boiling water, dissolve that, then add water to be able to allow those pieces of textile to move around freely while they are heating on the stove for about an hour. Here comes the suds. I'm gonna go ahead and add the fiber into this scour bath, which is on my stove. I will heat it to below a simmer. I do not want it to get above 85 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll let this sit here for about an hour. Step two is about applying the mordant. 
And since she's not including the textile, she's giving directions on how to work with cellulose or plant fibers, which is cotton or linen, bamboo, hemp, as well as how to mordant protein fibers, which are wool and silk. She gives incredibly explicit directions on what's called a tannin alum combo, which is used for cotton, as well as the very simple alum mordant used for protein fibers of wool and silk. With the cotton, they will have a cold soak in tannin for a couple of hours, and then both of them are going to have a hot soak in the alum. So we will first use the gall nut, which she has provided as the tannin source. We are going to put this in a non-reactive vessel. Now let's talk about a non-reactive vessel. So my pots, I have some that are stainless steel. That is a non-reactive pot. You can also use enamel. We are going to put enough water in so that the fiber can move around freely. She does note that if your fabric's crammed, the dyeing will be uneven, which can also produce a beautiful pattern or design. I really like these instructions. She makes them very free, which is great. Don't like it when things are too tight that you get nervous about doing things or making quote unquote mistakes. There are no mistakes in this as far as I'm concerned. So I really do like how Julie is giving you room to breathe within this process because I think that's important. Okay, so we're gonna fill the vessel to almost full with very hot water, which is going to dissolve the entire packet of gall nut. We'll get that gall nut into its pot and dissolved. Don't forget to stir your scouring fibers over here, making sure you're getting soap worked in. As you can see, my tap water is quite hot. So it will be enough to pour the gallo tannin in with this, fill it up so I know that the fiber will have room to move around and we'll let that dissolve before we move the scoured pieces into the tannin. Stir this around to get the gallo nut tannin dissolved. We got something in there. Looks like <laughs> it's a leaf. I don't know if that came from that or if that was in my pot. Pretty cute. Love it. That's definitely nature. Nature in a pouch. Here's the cotton. I'm just rinsing off the pH neutral soap and then I'm gonna place them into the tannin bath. In goes the cellulose fiber into the tannins to soak just from the warmth of the tap water. And we'll let this soak for one to two hours before we put them into the alum mordants. This has been sitting for about an hour and a half. You can see that it's taken on a little bit of the oak gall color. I'm gonna pull these out, I'm gonna gently rinse them, and I'm absolutely going to save this mordant, put it in a jar, label it, and I'll be able to use this as a tannin mordant for at least probably another 300 grams of fiber. So don't waste it. We can see little pieces of the oak gall that didn't dissolve. Just rinse those off and move those into the alum. The thing is that you have to be careful with heat and wool. It can felt the wool if it gets too warm. So this is a really gentle heat that you're gonna to wanna to put it in and you'll let that go for one to two hours. I'm going to do both of these at the same time. Cotton can take the heat, so we'll do a gentle all um, on the stove for both of these now. Our scoured silk and wool ribbon. We'll just rinse out the soap very gently. And then these are now scoured and ready to go into the alum bath. 
So this is a lot of alum. It is enough to mordant up to 500 or 600 grams of fiber. I am going to go ahead and make this entire alum pot, but I'm not gonna mordant enough to use it all. So what I'm gonna do is like I did with the tannin is I will work that in, dissolve it, use it for what I have, and then save this alum for more fiber to be mordant at a future time. And I can use it again. Okay. It's using a little bit of warmer water to go ahead and get it dissolved. And then I'm gonna add just regular old tap water to fill it up and get it ready for all of my fiber, both the protein and the cellulose fiber, to do its alum mordant bath. I'm going to put in the wool and silk and the cotton. And we'll let this sit on a low heat for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, and then we'll be ready to dye. All right, the alum bath is done. I let it cool in the alum bath. And so I'm gonna remove this now, squeeze off as much as I can back into the alum pot since I'm gonna be keeping this for future mordants. And then I'm gonna rinse the excess alum off of the textile itself. And this textile will be ready to dye. So step three, this next step is new to me. I have never made an extract from dye matter. And in looking at these instructions, what we're going to be doing is using just a very little bit of water, about an inch of water, over the dye material and cooking it for about 10 minutes. We're gonna strain off that liquid and then repeat the process. This is a brand new process for me. I've never done it this way, so this is gonna be kind of fun, but it looks like we're gonna be repeating this again and again until the liquid um, is no longer showing color or is basically clear, which means we've extracted all that we can from the dye matter. As I mentioned, she has some information about each one of the dyes here. She also includes some information about how you can shift the color. For example, with matter, um, calcium in the form of something like a Tums tablet will shift it more towards red. For cochineal, that's super pH sensitive. And so you can move it actually from pink to purple and even all the way over to orange using different things like vinegar, lemon, or cream of tartar. The other thing about cochineal that I noticed is she does not mention about crushing the cochineal. And when I was in Mexico, we crushed this using a mortar and pestle. So I'm gonna follow her instructions, which is just to leave them as the whole insect, but know that I've only ever crushed it before, pulverized it down to powder. The matter is a powder. It's not gonna just strain out. I'm gonna have to use cheesecloth in order to do that so that we can get multiple extractions. So you can see after I poured it through the cheesecloth, there's still quite a bit in there, like a sludge. So I'm gonna put that right back into the dye pot and add another inch of water. The dye pot also has some of that up the sides. So when you pour in the water, you can catch some of that so you can get your next extract. So let's do it again. 
we'll just use this to fill up water so we can slish it around and get that inch back in to do that second extraction. It is almost clear now. So I'm gonna call that done. We've gotten as much of that matter as we can out from the dry matter that we had. What we've done with the extraction is we have really just taken as much color as we possibly can from the dry dye matter itself. So we've made a blended dye of the first extraction and then all the exhausts so it gets all that color out so we're gonna have some good rich color that way time to repeat the process with the other three dyes extraction here we come So now that we have the extract, we will put it into a dye pot and add enough water so that the piece of fabric can move easily. We're not going to have to add any extra water because we had so many extraction strains that we have plenty of liquid. Honestly, we're going to be able to dye a lot more fabric than we are today. Then we're going to add the Morden fabric, which is ready, and we're going to do as we normally do, and that is heat it over medium-high heat for at least an hour, stirring occasionally. And then awesomeness is always to let your fabric cool in the pot, where you can then get a little extra time in the dye, remove it, rinse it until the water runs clear, and then you are done. And there's our matter dye, all extracted and ready to go. And we're going to drop the cotton, the wool, and the silk ribbon and let those simmer for about an hour.
Those colors are amazing. I absolutely loved working with the natural dye kit today. I have worked a bit with each one of those colors, but I really didn't appreciate how incredibly strong and vibrant these colors could be. So it was interesting to see the difference and how the color was absorbed, whether it was the cotton or the wool and silk. The Hannon and Alum Mordant process for the cotton is a fantastic way to go. So having that chance to test that out here with this kit will provide you with knowledge on a way to be able to make cotton a little bit more accepting of natural color. You may notice that the cochineal that I first pulled out and hung on the line was more of a fuchsia color and when it dried it went into the purple realm. I had left those soak overnight with no heat and I was not satisfied with the first pass on the wool and silk. They were quite light in the pink realm. However, I put them back in the pot for an hour on the stove and the colors got much darker. With the silk and wool, they stayed in that more fuchsia realm but the cotton traveled over into a purple realm. So the color did change in case you noticed that. Now, cochineal is pH sensitive. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, you can create all different shades of color from cochineal. And that's all based upon different factors like additives you may put in to modify the color, to shift the pH, as well as the mordant. And it appears something shifted with heat versus a cold soak. So colors can be wildly different depending upon so many factors. And the cochineal today showed us that. We'll have to do more videos on cochineal. It is such a versatile dye and so cool because of what you can do to modify its color. And matter's the same. Matter can shift more to a red color, also based upon adding calcium to your dye pot. So although the color looked quite red in the pot itself, it turned into more of an orangish color, which I love, both of them. And the silk and wool orange compared to the cotton orange were, were different. So know that your textile will also make a difference in terms of the colors, especially when you have ones that are sensitive to other elements you may introduce to the dyed matter. Some of the things I love about this kit, I explained throughout the video, but I wanted to point to the fact that the choices of dye matter that are in this kit are some of the most historically powerful colors and that is a great way to be able to bring that vibrancy into your dye studio. The instructions that were included were fantastic. They were incredibly informative, but also gave some room to be able to try some different things and not to be so strict to make you potentially feel uncomfortable or nervous about trying out these different dye sources. The other thing is the volume of dye matter that is included in this kit was very generous. I only dyed a few things, but I have so much dye extract left from this process that I will be able to dye so many more things with the potency of the dye that was included. I have a link below where you can buy the kit. You may see it in some local shops. It's also available on Etsy, but I have purchased it directly from Julie's website. It is a really reasonable price for the amount of dye matter that you get. And I think it's a wonderful way 
to be able to begin looking at some of the more traditional and also quite vibrant dye sources in the natural world. So now we have orange, yellow, purple, fuchsia, some pinks, all of those colors. One of the colors that we didn't explore in this natural dye kit is blue. And next week on Color Quest, we're gonna look at another kit that is being offered by the love of color, and that is indigo. So join me next week as we add one more color to our rainbow from these natural dye kits and learn a little bit about how to easily make an indigo vat all from one of Julie's natural dye kits. Look forward to seeing you next Friday. I hope you have a wonderful New Year's celebration and let's welcome all kinds of amazing natural color into our worlds for the year of 2022. Thank you so much for being here and for supporting Color Quest. It has been an incredible 2021 working alongside you in our dye studios. Have a great week and I'll see you next year. It is snowy and cold and I came to grab these from being dried and they are frozen solid. <laughs>